Should you judge a portfolio by its cover? No, right? Then why do we do it? We can open dozens of portfolios, but we decide to look at the ones that interest us the most, the one with the better cover. Portfolios with eye-catching covers have a higher chance of being looked at in job selections, and it's the first impression someone has of you and your work. So how do you design a great cover? Let's look at how to create it, why choose one over the other, and four things you must include in your cover. Design the cover last. A cover should be more or less a synthesis of the work you will see inside. To have an idea of what you want in your cover, your whole portfolio must be finished. And just in case you want to learn more about designing portfolio project spreads, you can watch this video right here or go to the playlist in the description outline the main characteristics of the portfolio. So you finished creating your portfolio. Now highlight the main themes of your portfolio design approaches. For example, font size, image to white space ratio, and image style. If your portfolio is minimal, you can create a minimal cover that mimics your style. If you use a particular color throughout your projects, you can place it on your cover to create an idea of continuity. Or if you have incredible drawings of a specific kind, highlight that on your cover. You don't want a cover that seems like it was designed by an entirely different person that designed the rest of the portfolio. Gather some inspiration. You are an architect, not a graphic designer. So try to get some inspiration from actual graphic designers that you like. Grab three different books, magazines, etc., that you like specifically for the cover, and this will help you understand what you're drawn to, how to design them. So I will try to create six different covers that I think could work in my portfolio, and next we can decide which one feels like the right fit. Since the cover is an essential part of the portfolio, you can design it in the program you can feel most comfortable with, and then import it into InDesign. Just make sure the actual text is placed all inside of InDesign. So let me show you these options options I created and how I did them inside of InDesign. For the first cover, I tried to mimic the graphic design of the never too small book by placing a large central image that you can consider the best or one of the best images in your portfolio. And at the lower third, the text. The only thing I changed from the, the original cover was the serif font to a same serif font, which I feel much more identified with and goes in the style of the whole portfolio. Also, I always like how lowercase titles and words look. It definitely does not not work everywhere, but in some cases it looks excellent. Also, I placed a solid color rectangle below the text to display an off-white. Since this portfolio is going to be digital, the actual paper doesn't have an influence on it. I decided to go with colors that I think look better on screen and off-white and off-black colors make everything easier to read and give it a more modern palette. For the second option, I wanted to keep playing with the idea of the main image and an off-white box that holds the text. So I placed the main image in a complete bleed mode on the page and in the middle I placed a white rectangle with the text. Now one small tip, your portfolio cover doesn't have to have the exact text or text structure as everyone else's. This really depends on your style and the overall concept of the portfolio. I wanted to change the order and hierarchy of the text so you can see what I'm talking about better. I gave more importance to my name and left the other words in a smaller font. Also, just so you can see, the many variations of the text format can completely change the feel of your cover. I placed all this in caps. Quick tip, if you want to resize your text quickly, don't go inside the text, select and modify. Just grab the box of text, press Ctrl Shift and drag it from one end to the other. Or add an alt to your selection to scale it from a central point. This will save you some time. So what if you don't have a main render as your cover drawing and it doesn't look as good? No worries, well, well-drawn floor plans, selections, or atonometrics can also work well. In this specific case, I used an atonometric with artificial intelligence, which if you want to learn how, you can click right here at the top of this video. This was more of a conceptual cover and not that visually dense. The drawing was placed on one side and the main text on the other. And as you can see here, I mix all caps text with lower caps. And also to give it an extra conceptual touch, I added random dots around the white space. Some people also like to insert quotes that they think that they like are relevant to them and this space would be a great place to include them just to ensure it doesn't become the center of attention but rather a little additional detail that people can read if they want but can we make this simpler well of course here i used an atenometric landscape drawing that i did a while ago with the watercolor trees that we have available in our resource library 
which you can download below. And I decided to use serif fonts for this just so you can see the different possibilities. Of course, if I included this cover in my current portfolio, I would use only sans serif fonts. Nonetheless, I wanted to try something different here. Also be aware of the color you use in these drawings. Some of these may have a color that you don't necessarily want to highlight. So if in this case I used a dark green, make sure your greens inside are not that saturated or are different. A consistent color palette throughout your portfolio can speak very well of your attention to detail. Now, this is an example of a clean aesthetic when approaching your cover design. But what if you want to be more disorganized, something that reflects your attitude towards design? I like to always take a look at books designed by Bruce Mao for Rem Koolhaas and see how you can break conventions while keeping a clean aesthetic. In this case, I wanted to create some big, bold text that would stand out from a sea of portfolios when looked at a glance. Something that clearly says that this portfolio is different. So I just wrote portfolio in a big letters and the complimentary information is below. Although it seems simple, you can mess this up really quickly. So if you were gonna be bold, make sure it looks nice. I tried to stay within the page bleed, and not leave margins occupying half the page and leaving the other page blank. Also, the actual word portfolio looks lovely when written in bold. Maybe your name doesn't look that nice. Just make sure you try various options. And of course, there are the traditional clean and maybe sometimes boring portfolio covers, which can represent your aesthetic, but also could not stand out as much as you want. If you want to stand out, don't copy the same cover styles everyone is doing. Try your own, discover your own style. Here I have some traditional options, which I can also use. They are clean and easy to read. This is more of a matter of organization in my typeface and understanding the balance between white space and text on the page. What if you don't have renders and drawings but don't want to leave them so bland and minimal? Well, there are also some conceptual options that you can approach depending on how you identify with them and how they will be reflected in the portfolio. Here, I placed three bounding boxes with the exact dimension of the three pieces of text I had on my cover and deconstructed them so I could so they could look a bit a little bit more abstract and conceptual. And in this other one, I created a series of rectangles and squares that from afar looks like a close-up view of a floor plan. Ideally, you want to spend some time creating your cover, given that it's very personal, but I also understand that sometimes we don't have all the time in the world to be creating covers. So just in case you need it, I will leave a link for you to download these templates in the description. Just open the InDesign file, drag your own images inside and replace your text. But hey, just make sure you put your own personal touch with it. This can be using a particular font, color, render, or drawing. Have fun! Now, if you have no idea what font you should be using in your portfolio, click on this video to watch 10 fonts I recommend you can use. Also, there will be a playlist at the bottom related to architecture portfolios. And thank you for watching, and I will see you in the following video. Bye.